She's like, heck yeah. They'll take it. Whoa, whoa, no, you I can put it. it in their mouth. Oh. Here. Oh, you got poop You know on. what we do when this happens? So this is Elvira. And Elvira is a rhino iguana. So today we're doing things a little bit different on CEO Fishing. It's animal day. Look at these little guys. See? Say hi. What's up guys, I'm Brian the CEO here and welcome back to another episode of CEO Fishing, except today we're not fishing. We are here with Miranda and we've got some cool animals to look at and play with and she's gonna tell us a little bit about them. So we're over here in Boynton Beach, Florida. This is Wildlife Wonderland. We're a nonprofit organization. So what we do is we take in all of the very aggressive lemurs here in South Florida. These guys are extremely common pets that are taken in because they're one of the cheapest in the exotic animal pet trade. And they come to us once they reach sexual maturity and want to basically maul their owners. <laughs> Over here we have our nice guys though. So we've got Jamal and we've got Ruth Ann. And these guys are actually endangered ruffed lemurs. So these guys are one of the sweet species of lemurs over here. So we're gonna pull Jamali out over here in a minute because he looks like he wants a little extra love. Somebody's coming out to play. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Jamal? Yes, this is Jamal. So we have the parent. Um, he's actually a tricolor rough lemur, uh -huh. and that's when a black and white rough lemur and a red rough lemur mate. Right. So these guys are a little hybrid action going on over here. And they're really, really just the sweetest things ever. And if we're lucky today, we'll be able to get a nice call out of them because these guys make a really strange call. And it's heard up to a half a mile away. It's basically unlike anything you've ever heard wow. before. Yeah, are you going to show off your loudness? So fluffy. I know, right? I'm allergic, too. Oh. Don't eat that. <laughs> Don't eat that. Oh, <laughs> that's the call. There it is. <laughs> so I'm guessing they like bananas? They love bananas. It is true. Here. Oh, that was immediate. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so we're holding him on the base of his tail over here, uh -huh. and that doesn't hurt him at all. They have extremely strong tails. They don't use them for anything other than balance, though. Right, so they're not, they're, what, prehensile no, tails? No, yeah, okay. they're not. The kinkajous have those prehensile tails, though, which we'll see those little crazy guys in a bit. <laughs> He's like, I don't want the banana, I just like you. <laughs> <laughs> little sweet boy so they can actually have the sugar and candy yeah so these guys are frugivores so they're like extremely used to having sweets <laughs> nom, nom, we nom, do nom. it only though once in a, a blue moon okay otherwise they can get like high blood not high blood pressure diabetes oh diabetes yeah so we don't want to we don't want to risk that no we don't <laughs> you want to be the one that when he's done with that diabetes one? And where are they um, typically so from? So these guys are indigenous to Madagascar. Oh, and the cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's where all the lemur species are from. Okay. So these guys' issues with their numbers is the females will refuse to breed um, breed when breeding season comes if there's a food scarcity. So they're having food scarcities over there because of mining. And they're taking over their one and only land for farmland. So these guys are having some difficulties. That's why it's beautiful to be able to contribute to the conservation here in captivity. So that's why we let our little babies breed because someday I feel these guys are only gonna have a chance if they are have a good amount of numbers here in captivity, right? At facilities like ours. So every year when our uh, mommy has babies, we have a bunch of facilities reach out and then they go on a list and then our little babies go over there to com be companions to other lemurs and things like that. So it's a beautiful little cycle we got going on. You like that, huh? Who wouldn't? So, and these guys are really cool because they're equipped with six nipples. So these are one of the only primates that can have up to six babies at once. So and meet the Fokker's moment. Yeah. Can you milk it? <laughs> <laughs> you can. They have an extremely fast metabolism uh -huh. and they'll poop out basically seeds and they can swallow seeds up to the size of a quarter. 
So every poop, they literally reproduce stuff. So when I see little like sprouts in their poop, I literally take them home. We have like a couple papaya trees from yeah. them. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> well, the kinkajous made the papaya tree. But they're not crappy papayas. Oh, well, they haven't produced yet, but we'll Produce. see. If they are crappy, <laughs> it's still good enough for us, right? That's right. <laughs> And what's his name? So this is actually, we did a, um, a name raffle and everybody got to enter their names. And um, the winner um, put in Antonio Banderas. <laughs> so that's his name. Antonio. Yeah, right? That's how you gotta say it or else it's not even. Yeah, it doesn't it's work. Not right. It's so this little guy, one of my friends, um, he, he had like a bunch of baby foxes on accident. He's uh -huh. like, I don't know what to do. He's like, please take one. I'm like, all right, just pick out the craziest one. So that he did. Here, do you want to walk him? While I prepare his little meats. All right, so what are we feeding him? So these are some delicious gizzards. All right. Okay. We actually eat these too, but we cook ours. Yeah. <laughs> Here, ready? Just hold that out to him. And then you'll see him change like day and night. Antonio, you silly boy. Look. Yep, just put it closer. Uh, Look, and then he gets all mean. Look, it's right. <laughs> you can't run away with it. <laughs> oh, I know. They oh. gotta. They gotta protect their oh. food sources. Oh, here, come. I'll put you back <laughs> while you eat that. You'll Okay, 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 okay. Mine, mine. Oh, mine, oh, mine. go, go, go. Go everywhere with it. <laughs> Here. You want some more? You do want some more. Just yeah, just put it through. Antonio, look. Don't be silly. Oh, I just grabbed it. She'll come on to you. Okay. If you want to like try to put, yeah, there, there you go. There we go. Here, all the way over here. Lovely. Here we go. All right, gorgeous. Hey. So this is Walda. And Walda, hey, Walda over here is an owl monkey. These guys are the only new world um, nocturnal monkeys. So these guys are obviously up at night and they've got those big old eyes over there. That's why they call them owl monkeys. And despite how small their ears are, they actually have an incredible hearing. And the reason why they have up, oh, you, you're getting peed on. I feel it. Oh, look and at it's it going go. down my arm and my leg. <laughs> this is a great day. Yes. So the reason why these guys pee so often is because, and they'll mark their tails and their hands with it. Okay. So they do that because when they're out at night, they want to be able to find their way back to where they're going. So right. they'll pee on basically everything so that they're able to also have a, Smell their a way scent back. trail. Look, she's really right going. Look she's at that. really got it. I bring out the best in them. She's going to know how to find you from a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. A little cute girl. So these guys, um, they eat insects, they eat protein, they eat vegetables, they eat fruits. These guys are really good eaters. So we yeah. like that a lot because a lot of our guys over here are picky. They won't eat our vegetables. So she never leaves a veggie behind. I know you shaking. Yeah. So you'll see a, with a lot of our nocturnal animals mm -hmm. is they'll shake. And that's because when they're out during the day, they're just kind of a little skeptical and that's normal. Feel exposed. Yeah. They're like, we're not used to this, but we do it because there's food involved. That was going to be my next question. I'm like, <laughs> she's, she's yeah. Yeah, the kinkajous will do that. Yeah. So a lot of the times when we have volunteers, they're like, this one's shaking. I'm like, it's fine. It's because they're well, out during the day. So they naturally just get a little iffy because these guys are so small in size. That's yeah. why they picked up a nocturnal habitat or habit. She's hiding behind a banana now. Yeah. She's like, this is my safe spot, banana. These guys actually kiss. So when I yeah. go in there, they kiss to say hello. They'll put their little oh. mouth up against mine. They're like, hey, hey. And funny story with them peeing on their hands and feet, we used to all think it was really cute because they mm -hmm. used to reach down into the back of our throats. And then um, when we figured out that they, they pee all, all over it, we were like, oh, oh yeah. ew. Because we would literally just go in there, open our mouths, let them like touch our teeth and everything. So now we don't let them do that anymore. <laughs> oh, now she's doing a poop. All right, get that poop. Yeah, there yes. you go. Yes, let it all out. Let it She's all really out. She's really blessing you today. These guys are from Panama. Panama. Yeah. 
And they're, apparently they're really hard to spot in the wild because they're nocturnal, they're so small, and they stay way up in the trees. So these guys are arboreal. It's very rare you'd ever, ever see one on the ground. And they do that obviously as protection because if they're on the ground, anything yeah. will eat these guys up. They're so small. This is them full grown. So right. there's different locales of them and they look kind of different. If you see Walda or Darla over here has a completely different face and coloration. Okay, and that's because yeah. she's from a different area in South America. Oh yeah, well Central. Central America, right like baby girl? Toes and fingers. Right, they're so cute and creepy all at the same time. They got their little opposable thumbs going on so they can cause all kind of havoc. When these guys come over the house, they break absolutely everything. We have nothing nice left. <laughs> Pictures been taken down, ceiling fans. We have no, uh, no shades, no curtains, no decorations. It looks like we're either moving in or moving out or squatting, right? <laughs> yeah. The meanest of the bunch. The meanest mm -hmm. of the bunch. The meanest of the bunch. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to feed them a banana? Yeah. All right. Because that's the only time they're nice is when you're putting food in their mouth. All right. So there's two of them. So we're going to give them each an equal portion over here because we don't right. want anybody to feel left out. And time then we'll to divide feed it the again. mean ones. And Even we'll... the grumpies need love too. <laughs> yeah, right? That's what this whole organization is about, right? Oh look, you guys have a beautiful mango on top of your enclosure. So we don't okay. have this sign here for nothing, All literally. Right. All right, so we've got Topper over here. Topper is the meanest lemur I've ever encountered. And what he does is he does this, where he uh -huh. looks all cute, okay? And then he, the second you go near him, he gets, tries to scratch, tries to bite. <laughs> he's And he does backflips, he's really cute. Because, <laughs> see, he's got his little jiggly roll over there. And this is Bella. Bella was our first surrender. She's actually all the way from South Carolina. South our Carolina. little Southern Bella over here. And she actually overcame cancer last year. Really? Congratulations, yeah. Bella. You go, girl. So yeah, if you want to give them a piece of the banana, they'll yeah. take it. Ooh, ooh, no, you I can put it. it in their mouth. Okay. I'm looking through the camera, so my depth perception is off. Here, want me to? I got it. Okay. There you go. You got number one, and, and then Topper Boy, topper. number two, the only time he's sweet. Oh, there you go, good boy. Is that and delicious? And look, they chew so fast. Nom, 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 Oh. She loves there the camera. She likes okay. to sniff it and grab the phone and everything. So just be aware. <laughs> she tries to steal my phone all the time. And you just Are you getting peed on? Here. Oh, you got poop. You know on. what we do when this happens? We do a poop. <laughs> Congratulations. There's a technique We're playing the lotto today. <laughs> And the Here. lemurs are Madagascar? Yeah, so these guys are Madagascar too. These are obviously ring-tailed lemurs, the most iconic species of lemurs. Everybody's seen the movie Madagascar, yeah. knows King Julian. So these guys are one of my favorites because they're the most misunderstood. They're aggressive. Yeah. At age two, these guys will turn on everybody. So they often attack all their owners and they get sliced up, sent to the hospital. And then they call me so these guys live actually up to 25 years, 30 years in captivity. We get them at around age two and they're gonna be with us for life. So yes, we've got quite the road ahead of us, don't we? So we were lucky to pair these two up, uh -huh. which is phenomenal because Bella lived alone for a year and then we got Topper in. Oh, you handsome boy, you handsome boy. And I don't know if you could see here, but you see that little that little black spur on his forearm. Yes. What he'll do is he takes that little spur uh -huh. and he'll grind it up onto the bars of the cage. And so basically what he's doing is he's engraving his scent into it because they have a scent gland on also their forearm uh -huh. right above that and on their chest. So and that's what they do with their tail as well is they'll use that to sting fight. Okay. <laughs> if we had my uh, animal caretaker here, Gianna, he hates her with a passion <laughs> and he always gives the best sting fight examples with her here. So what he'll do is he'll put his little tail between his arms and his chest and then they waft it around like a helicopter. Swedish fish for the little Southern belle over there. Look at her. You go girl. You say, Kinkajou? Kinkajou. Kinkajou. Yes. So we'll see him. He's All something right. else. <laughs> Come on, Hecky. Bring your friend. <laughs> so let's see. We got a we... basculus lizard over here. 
Oh yeah, we got all yeah they yeah. that and then we have one that like lives in the cage with that other yeah. uh, right. Well, maybe mean. that is him. Are they? Yeah. I haven't been able to grab one yet. I always try. Stitch wants to be like all calm today. Hey. Oh. Oh. So he's gotten me a couple times by yeah. acting like he's sweet. So he was clearly surrendered for aggression. These are kinkajous and. You guys might think they're a primate, but these guys are actually in the raccoon family. Really? Yes, and these guys are from South America as well. These are the ones with the prehensile tail. Okay. So they will fully use these tails to hang. He will hang from his tail and his back feet. They use it to like reach certain things or like cling on to you when they're like attacking you. That's what he did to me. He used his hands and his feet to like hold on. His tail was like wrapped around my arm. I'm like, <gasps> you. <laughs> So these guys are nocturnal too, okay. and they're also called the honey bear. And the reason why they call them that is obviously because they look like a bear, and then because they're notorious for raiding beehives. So these guys are savage, because I don't know anybody that willingly just goes up into a beehive. Look at those yes. claws. Yes, all the better to scratch you with. <laughs> oh, there he is. There's the meanest boy. These guys are actually equipped with an incredible five inch long tongue. And what that tongue does is that's used to go ahead and insert into the neck of the flowers. Uh -huh. And they'll go ahead and extract a bunch of nectar and then they get pollen on their faces. So when they go flower to flower, they go ahead and also pollinate, which is pretty awesome. You see his cheeks over there, how it's uh -huh. bald? Yeah. So that's a scent gland. Okay. And then they have another one located on their chest, which you probably can't see his very good, but Pebbles really likes to show hers off. So we'll be able to check hers out. They'll use that and they rub up on everything. And if you see like this black stuff here, like they make a film, like an oily, oily film with that. And it's all over everything. We have to constantly scrub their enclosures out because it's always getting oily and it looks just, you know, it doesn't look so good. But within a week, everything is, basically black from them. Very excited for the banana. Yeah. So we got these two over here. We got this one over here is Gus. Gus I actually hand raised. And then we have little Aubrey over here. And Aubrey came to us at the beginning of COVID. Um, the owner that she had like got kicked out of his place obviously because all the rent skyrocketed and everything like that. And then he was unable to take her. So he was literally like surfing friends couches and had her in like basically like a lockout situation over there, that little cage we have yeah, at the that. end. Um, and that's what she was living in. So he was oh. like, I don't know what to do. He loved her to pieces, but uh, he felt bad. So he did the right thing. So I respect that a lot. A lot of the people that we have had surrender, none of the animals were like neglected or anything like that. Just the people couldn't handle it. Yeah. And then Gus over here turned on me last year. Gus, come on, man. Use now, your is the same thing with these guys as after yeah. about the two year mark? Two year, well him, he was nice until about the five year mark. Okay. And then he started turning. So he wouldn't let me in the lemur room at the house or anything. Mm -hmm. And then um, I had to like really strategically get him out one day because he really wanted he wanted to taste my blood, this guy over here. Now he's chilled out because we've got his girl to keep him in check. Gotcha. So the lemurs, the ringtails, they're uh, dominated by a female matriarch. So that's when the woman controls all the men. She controls the whole entire troop. And yeah, so she put him in check and we like that. Yeah, as all the great ladies should, right mean little baby? She was actually really nice when we got her. Yeah. And then one of the uh, volunteers had a bad experience with her and then she didn't like any of us after that. <laughs> so that's how quick it is for them to uh, change their now, minds. When they get to that age, um, why is it that they do start to become more aggressive? So these guys um, have a, they're one of the smaller species of lemurs. So they're often getting like attacked by different larger animals. So, and they also have larger numbers of troops. So these guys have to stay aggressive in order to protect their territories and their babies. So at two years old, um, the females get nasty because they want to bump up in the, um, in the troop system. And that's really where it happens from there. At two years old, they start challenging the weakest so member of the troop. that's when they're mature enough to actually yeah, start, to start okay. moving up in rank. All so right. that's all I've got. Oh, wait, here you go. <laughs> yeah. Here you go, Gussie. Oh, look, you can see his spur. That's what they use to scent mark. 
And these guys are extremely social animals. So a lot of the times um, people will get them as personal pets mm -hmm. and they keep them alone. And then once they start getting older, they get extra mean because they don't have the social stimulation because everybody works, they leave them alone. So that is a big contribution to their, uh, their little mental, mental illnesses here. All right, you guys good? You guys got double Swedish fish, so you're welcome. You're welcome. Steal a pet while your mouths are full. Okay. <laughs> Fred! <laughs> and Walda! Walda came over from across the street to say what's up. So Pebbles is the one here. Let me show you her scent gland on her, uh, see? On her throat right there? Yeah, I see it. So that everybody's like, oh my God, what's that bald spot? It's a beautiful little scent gland. And these guys actually like leave off like a, a really sweet musky smell. Baymax, are you coming out? <laughs> Baymax is the one that I hand raise. He used to free roam my house. And then we got Pebbles, that one, and she was about five pounds overweight, which for a kinkajou is insane. Yeah. Can you imagine an animal that size, five oh, pounds five overweight? Pounds, she yeah. was literally was a sausage. And that's what the owner was feeding her, was Vienna sausages. Wow. <laughs> Here. You're cute. So cute, right? Oh. With those little ears and they move them around when there's a lot yeah. of sounds. They go in like different directions. Oh, there you go. Ooh, 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 ooh. Good catch. There. So. <laughs> He's very gentle, as you can see. I know you happy. Those little sounds are actually the owl monkey on my shoulder kind of purring into the microphone. Elvira! <laughs> Let's get the cobwebs off her face for her big debut. So what she's gonna do is she's gonna try to climb onto your head. Cause that's what she loves to do. She does have a little bit of long nails, but usually doesn't scratch too bad. So you go girl. <laughs> so this is Elvira. And Elvira is a rhino iguana. So these are very different looking iguanas than what we're used to seeing down here in South Florida. Yeah. And she's very dark right now, and that's because the lack of sunlight, because it's been raining for the past couple days. These guys will darken up to help absorb as much heat as possible. Usually she's like a very light gray with like some blue tints on her and whatnot. She's gorgeous. But right now she's dark like that because she's just trying to soak up any heat she could possibly get because reptiles need their heat in order to digest and all that fun stuff. And that's why on cooler days, you'll see them just sunning out in yeah. the asphalt and the concrete. Yeah, they lay out. They're like, oh, the heat. <laughs> and if you want to look over here, she's got an external eardrum. So that doesn't hear the way we do. This is more like vibrations and things like that. Oh, yeah, careful. She'll try to grab it. Don't do that, you bad girl. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, her, her best friend is terrified of lizards. Really? Even little lizards. She won't even walk into the house if they're in front of her. You're biting my cord. Well, oh, there she goes, on to the head. This is what she loves to do, and she'll just sit there. <laughs> One of the many reasons why we wear hats. <laughs> so what type of iguanas are the ones that we're usually seeing down south with so all the bright green? So down here, the green ones, the invasive species that yeah. we have down here, those are the green iguanas. And oh, literally in the name. Yeah. Green. Yeah, those are just the green. These are the rhino iguanas. So these guys are actually from the Dominican Republic. Okay. And they have their coloration like they do. Like I said, the gray, they turn this color and with a little bit of blue because they're rock iguanas. So they'll okay. hang out on the rocks and they'll sunbathe. And then over here, which you can't tell. Oh, I'm, but, I'm looking at the little. Yeah, her little, that's why they call them the rhino, the rhino iguana. Okay. Yeah. So when they see predators, they literally just dart off into the water. They're incredible swimmers. And they're really, really cool. They see in color and they're extremely docile. So we love them. They're like little puppy dogs. The sweetest of the iguana species by far. And a cool thing about them is when they're really threatened, if something has them by the tail, they have yeah. the capability of like dropping their tail. They'll just completely let it go. I had a, a caiman lizard that did that once and I was mortified. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it was like a Lego piece. 
So look, over here, uh -huh. they have their third eye. Okay, so that's like a motion sensor. Okay. And that helps them when they're basking out on the uh, rocks and whatnot. And that helps them see if anything's coming up from above as an opposable threat, gotcha. they, will, they will get out of there real quick because they don't have any means of defense other than their tail to whip. Do all iguanas have that eye or this is something that's uh, specific? They do, to they them. do. Bearded dragons have the eye. Okay. Quite a few of different lizard species okay. have that eye. Yeah, I never realized so that. So it's extremely beneficial and cool. Hers is very visible. So like with the... Ugh, bearded dragon, you can't see it as much. Come here. You're torturing our new friend. <laughs> you can't do that. So look here. Let's see if we can get her out of there. So look, see that eye right there? Yeah. It's super cool. The kids always think they're like, oh, she could see. I'm like, no, it's like a motion sensor. Basically like in the spy movies, those little red laser beams. Yeah. That's what that is. The cutest little fox. Hey. <laughs> So this is Fabrizio, and he's full grown. He's not a fennec fox. Everybody often confuses him for that because they do look very similar. But this is a pale fox, which is another species of sand fox, but they're from different locales of Africa and just adorable. Look at this little cutie. He is so sweet and friendly. He loves to just snuggle and be held. He used to live in my house. He loved it so much. Um, but then he had to move out, right? And now he's thriving out here. His coat has gotten extremely luscious. Look at him. You want to hold him? Oh. Yeah, these guys are the only species of fox I would ever recommend anyone to even think about getting because their personalities are extremely, extremely sweet. And he's just, you know, they're not like any other fox in my opinion. And they smell just a little, a little less than the reds. You go, buddy. Being shy right now. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You want this too? You want your gizzards? Yeah. Let me just get your ears. With his little dirty ears, I need to clean those bad boys. I don't know what he does in here to get them so dirty. Who knows? Hey, buddy. How's he smelling? I can't smell. You can't? So. I, <laughs> I lost my sense of smell long ago, too, so <laughs> I can't smell. Oh, yeah. Come this time of year, they shed. They start looking like they're malnourished and everything. Yeah, I got sick before COVID, and I had fever for seven days straight, really? and I lost my sense of smell. So I get some sense that I can smell again now, but it's not the same. Nothing smells the same. Well, then this kind of stuff is perfect for you because mm -hmm. you won't be bothered by anything. <laughs> My sense of smell's horrible too, so that's why I do so well. Yeah. Oh, everybody's like, ew. I'm like, ew. <laughs> I know. So, I just gave me a surprise down my back. You got feet on again. Coco! And this little cutie's Coco over here. We tried to put her in with the other female over yeah. there, but she, they did not get along. Well, Careful. we know which one was the dominant one. She got yeah. her butt kicked. And with the females, when you put them together, integrate any lemurs together, they have a little fight. Mm -hmm. And then that'll either clear up who's the dominant one or they'll continue to fight and they'll fight to the death. Gotcha. So when I saw that they were the other one was still going on her, I was like, mm -hmm. so we had to pull her out. Well, but she done. gets, yeah, I'm like, we're not you're risking done. that. <laughs> so she gets a little friend who gets surrendered here in about a, about a, four months yeah so finally she'll have a companion it's a younger male so yeah. you know you beat you up on him a little, little bit <laughs> for real and maybe they'll have some cute little endangered babies yeah you have a little family you go girl she's the only sweet one that lets me do this love you <laughs> I can fit in here. You just gotta really crouch down. <laughs> Let me go get some of the meat because not everybody knows that these guys like to eat meat. I did not. Some days I'll come in here and it'll be like half a rat is just on the floor. And I'm she like, got it. oh girl, you had a wild night. 
Pedra. So these guys don't really have a good, um, good sight. So they rely a lot on their smell. <laughs> and these guys are obviously nocturnal as well. Yeah. And a cool thing about these guys that not everybody knows is how in incredibly amazing these guys are for the environment. So they eat like thousands of ticks a year. Yeah. And so they're helping us prevent Lyme disease over here. Well, they're cute little ears. I think they're adorable. Yeah. It's the hands that are uh, on the creepy side. <laughs> Did you get those? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. The little hands and feet. What do you think? No. Somebody just <laughs> jumped back on me. I guess it's the bathroom break again. I'm uh, apparently I am the toilet today. Hey. You see yourself? Well, I'm definitely going to need a lint roller, but I hope you guys enjoyed the content today. Thank you for having us uh, over here and sharing your animals with us, but Tell everybody how to find you and um, about the nonprofit where they can donate if they want to uh, donate to all the kids here. Absolutely. So we're Wildlife Wonderland and in our bio we have all of our link tree stuff. We've got every link. We have a bunch of fundraisers going all the time because as a nonprofit we can't do this without you guys. So in order for us to continue our mission, taking in these guys, supporting these guys for 20 years to come, can't do it without you. So. Feel free to help out, message us. If you're local and want to volunteer, manual labor is priceless and we love you for it. So thank you guys for tuning in and we hope you like what our cause is for. All right, so I will put the link in the description. I'll put all the links in the description below. And uh, as usual, guys, keep your head up, keep moving forward and tight lines. Zzz.